Hi, my name is John and this is Business Focus. In today's video, I will share with you or talk about what descriptive analysis is all about. So let's get started. Descriptive analysis or describing your data is a very important, crucial aspect in order to make a, the best decision or informed decision. In order to make that crucial decision, making sense of your data is critical that so many people spend so much time analyzing data over and over. So how do you analyze data? Obviously, you have to understand first what are the different types of data. So there are two main types of data. First is qualitative data or categorical data. This pertains to your uh, name, school that you went to, profession, countries, and so forth. The other type is quantitative data or numerical data. This can pertain to your social ID number, your age, your weight, uh, your SAT scores, revenues generated, and so forth. So understanding those two types of data is critical so that you, when you summarize that, you can use the appropriate tool for the right type of data. Now, normally, if you try to summarize it or try to make sense, normally you try to use different uh, tools at your disposal. But one of the more common tools that is being utilized that is accessible to everyone is Microsoft's Excel, whether you're a Mac user or even a Windows user. Normally, you sort the data or rearrange it to get some insights now if you have a small sample size that's it five or ten that's easy enough but once your data comprises of tens of thousands or even millions of sample size it gets difficult to understand them now there are two main ways to be able to make sense of your data first is creating distributions uh, particularly using tabulation and creating charts Second is using numerical measures, meaning using numbers to describe your data. Typically using measures of location, measures of variability, as well as measures of association between two variables. So we'll go through it one by one. So when we create distributions here, uh, an example that is often used is creating tabulation or tallying or creating frequency distribution or simply counting. So let's say you have a data set in your business. You're trying to understand the customer profile here. So you tabulate, let's say, gender. You count how many are male and how many are female. Obviously, if you if it's predominantly male, your strategy would differ if it's pre predominantly female or if it's equally distributed, then your strategy would differ as well. Now, a variation of tabulating your data or distribution in this case is using charts to visualize your uh, distribution here. Now, whether you're using a bar chart or a histogram or even a scalar plot here. But the point here is to visualize it so you can see the different bars. So you can see which one or which category or interval has the higher bars or lower bars here. Again, it's just a va variation of your tabulation, but it gives you the same insight. Now, the second method uh, uh, in terms of summarizing or understanding data is using numbers. So one of the examples here is measures of location. And a prime example of a measure of location is the mean or the average. So how can the average help us understand the data? So let's say you have a salesperson who generated uh, sales in the past few months. So let's say last month he generated 100,000. Means nothing, right? And compare that to this year, let's say the uh, the sales that he generated or she generated is 150. So if you average it, you get 125,000. What does this 125,000 signify or uh, what's your interpretation? Compared that to the previous month, he has a lower uh, sales compared to the average means he did poorly then compare that to the average uh, to the sales he generated this month which is higher than the average so you could take it in two ways meaning what happened uh, how come you did poorly in the previous month and what happened here that you were able to generate more sales and take note the average will always move because as the period or the weeks or the months or even years move forward it can vary now it's not likely that it will always be the same throughout the period. That's why the average could go higher or lower or somewhere in the middle. But, but it moves more often than not. 
Now, another numerical measure that is often used is the measures of variability. How dispersed is your data here? So some may not be familiar why you even use uh, this measure. Uh, an example is standard deviation or even variance. So why use this measure? So a good example is, uh, let's say you're comparing the, the performance of two salesperson here. Now, if, if, yeah, example, and this can happen, let's say the average sales for, do, uh, for both per, uh, salesperson is the same. So salesperson one and two's average sales is 100,000. But how they get the 100,000 may differ. So let's say salesperson one's past three months performance is, he generated 80,000, 100,000, and 120,000. And if you average those three, it's still 100. For salesperson two, the sales for the past three months is 60,000, 100,000, and 140. And yet, if you average it, it's still 100,000. Question, which salesperson do you think is doing better, even though the average for both salesperson is the same? Is it salesperson one or salesperson two? If you're thinking salesperson two is doing better because he generated the higher sales, 140, if you look at the opposite spectrum, he generated the least amount of sales, which is 60,000. So means can be deceiving sometimes. So we use standard deviation as another measure. Now, comparing the two, salesperson one tends to do better because of his or her consistency. Uh, if you look at it, uh, the average sales is only plus minus 20,000 uh, in, 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 the, uh, in the sales on the past few months. Compare that to salesperson two, the deviation or the dispersion is plus minus 40,000, significantly higher. So if you were to choose between the two salesperson, I'd bet I'd choose always salesperson one more often than salesperson two. So that's how you use standard deviation to compare uh, performances or values in terms of how distributed it is or how how dispersed is the data set. Obviously, the narrower the dispersion, better. If it's exactly zero, meaning it's consistent throughout. Now, another numerical measure that is often used is uh, measures of association between two variables, meaning you're trying to connect the two relationships between two variables. So let's say sales is a important uh, variable for any businesses. Uh, so you're trying to make sense what affects, what has a strong relationship with sales. Is it your salesperson, the product that you're selling, your customers, or your location where you're selling your product, your business is, and so forth, and many more other factors that you can consider. But in correlation, you're trying to find out which of those variables I just mentioned, or factors, has a high correlation whether it be positive or negative whether it's strong or weak so the point here is trying to understand make sense of your data in terms of uh, let's say the location has a high correlation to your sales meaning the better the location the higher the sales that it would generate meaning does it mean entails uh, positioning your location in high heavily uh, high foot traffic in that location or or low foot traffic or maybe can it be located in rural area versus urban area and so forth so obviously correlation is very insightful in terms of describing the relationship here now as a bonus there's one more measure that is often used or misused in some cases uh, typically when you're dealing with distributions here now in some instances how do you analyze or uh, determine if any of your data or observed values is considered an outlier or an anomaly, so to speak. And one of the more common usage is using the Z-score, so in order to analyze your distribution here. So let's say one of your salesperson generated a sales of 300,000 on a particular period. Compare that to the average sales of the team is only 100,000. Now, would you consider 300,000 an anomaly? Some may say yes because of a very extreme high value. Now, in order to be able to confirm that, you use these scores to, to determine how, uh, if it's uh, considered an outlier, if it's three standard deviations beyond. Now, if it's one plus minus one standard deviation that's comprised only 68% of the data set, if it's plus minus two standard deviations, that's 95% of your data set. 
and if it's plus minus 3 standard deviations away, that comprises 99%. And beyond that, that's considered an outlier. So to, to solve for the z-score, you simply subtract the observed value minus the sample mean divided by the standard deviation. So in this sample, let's say we have 300,000 minus 100k, so that's 200, divided by 50, and you get 4. So if your z-score is equal to 4, which is beyond plus minus 3 standard deviation for z-score, that is considered a an outlier. So meaning you want to take notice of that sales performer, meaning who's doing really well. So what necessitates that? Maybe you could replicate that or take advantage so that you could uh, replicate that performance and moving forward. So those are some of the tools that you could use to better understand your data. And once you've gained uh, different perspective, meaning being able to sift through relevant information to not so relevant critical information to help you make that uh, better decision or the best decision that you can make for your business or for your organization. Hopefully, with this, you will be able to have a better appreciation of how to analyze uh, data. Uh, if you're interested to know how to do the step-by-step, -step, uh, you can check out my other video here. I think it's in this one. Uh, how to analyze your data here. Anyway, uh, this concludes our video. If you find this video helpful, don't forget to hit the like and subscribe button. Also, leave your comments down below to suggest other topics for future videos. For more guides, tutorials, and tips, you can check out my other videos. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.